Okay, today we're going to continue where we left on from the previous tutorial intact, talk about the layers panel. Uh, as you can see, we have icons on all three sides of the layers panel and in the middle we have a preview which will show us uh, information about uh, the material itself, um, the color, the uh, interaction with light. Uh, we'll explain more as we will go through our main types of materials. Uh, our first icon on the right here is the basic type of material. When you click it, you immediately uh, see update on the preview information here. You see the main color. Uh, the yellow dot here represents that this is the active layer or the one you're working on at the moment. And uh, you hear, see here light information or an you see light coming in, hits, hits the surface of the material and then gets diffused uh, uniformly. Once we create our material, we use the scatter on, and structure panels to uh, modify it. Uh, the diffuse color is the main color of the material and we can change it by clicking on the box here. And we will be presented with the color lab. Uh, we will take some time here to explain uh, the color lab. You can change your color either by clicking here on the gradient map uh, and the lightness of it, of course. Or you can work with more accurate values, RGB, HSV or XYZ. I prefer working with HSV, that stands for Hue Saturation Value. Uh, because it gives me more control of how I can pick my color and after that uh, I can pick different variations of my color. Uh, the hue changes the color itself. The saturation, of course, gets from black and white to a more intense color. And the value will increase from, to a, dar from a darker one to a, a lighter one. Here on the left you can see a preview of your current selection of color and underneath you will see how this color will look like if different uh, light hits it or interacts with it. Uh, this is how the color will look like if incandescent light shines upon it, if sunlight, if just sky is enabled, photolight, daylight, and fluorescent light. Here in the bottom we have the spectrum and black body panels which are used for lighting purposes and we will discuss them uh, a little bit later. And finally we have the palette here. Here we can save our current selections and, uh, and here you can also organize your color. To store a chosen color, you just hit, click a box here, an empty one, and it will save it. If you want to delete a color, you hold control and right click on the mouse and it will delete it. And uh, also if you right click on the color itself, uh, you could rename it or name it. You don't see uh, uh, right now uh, immediately what's going on because I use two monitors and this information goes to my first monitor and I have to drag it here. If you want uh, to create a new palette for uh, a new project for example, you just hit plus here, uh, you will enter a name for your palette and you get a blank new palette. Then you can create your colors for different types of course of uses and you can also name them and uh, reuse them later for uh, everything you might need. It is a much easier way to work with colors and not search for them in your uh, program in your uh, 3D modeling program. Uh, by pressing the A here you can see a list view 
or the current view. An important thing to know about the diffuse color is um, not to set it to its maximum value uh, because in nature you really will not find uh, colors that intense. So that's why we have these two dotted lines here. Uh, this represents the 85% of intensity for the material. Uh, up to this line you probably find 99% uh, of all materials, how they look, the, their maximum uh, value, their maximum intense color intensity. Uh, after that, between these two lines, you will find uh, colors in laboratory conditions. They can be achieved, uh, this color can be achieved in uh, this intensity in laboratory conditions and beyond this point uh, this is just not physically realistic to use uh, such an intense color uh, plus you probably uh, could uh, have some noise issues with your renders uh, if you set it that high so we've ch chosen our color and then confirm and immediately uh, you will see update in uh, here in the preview and in the later. Next, uh, we can add reflectance to our material by clicking. You will again be greeted with the Thea Color Lab. We choose a color, and you see how you have now a reflection of your. Basic. A good starting point for reflectance is that middle gray I've selected. Uh, and from then on, you can increase its value and you achieve a more reflective, uh, more a lighter, type, lighter reflectance. Or you can change it with the N, D, and K values, which we'll discuss a little bit later. You can control how reflective your material will be if you go to the structure panel and set a different type of roughness. A lower l l a roughness will need will need uh, look uh, will make the material look more reflective, and a higher roughness will make it look less l reflective. A thing to know about roughness is that in nature perfect reflection and perfect roughness do not really exist so for a more realistic looking type of materials I would go for roughness between 0 0.5 and 70 percent and uh, use it up to 100 if I just want to achieve a different type of result or a specific type of material Also, when setting roughness to zero, for example, the TR engine in theory rendered render the material more slowly, but the BSD adaptive engine will render it more quickly. So it really depends on uh, what engine you're going to use uh, for your render. Another thing about reflectance is uh, that if you are going to if you're going for a more reflective material, it is more natural to use a gray-white type of color for your reflection, as the light will get directly reflected. And if you want to create a somewhat, somewhat uh, reflective material, you could use the same color for reflectance as uh, uh, your diffuse color and set it to a higher value, for example. Okay, like this. And you get increase the roughness a little bit. So this will create some reflection and the color itself 
it will look a little bit more natural when it's uh, it's so rough because um, let's imagine then when when the uh, the material itself is uh, more rough the roughness itself is an evenness in the material and that means that uh, when uh, the light comes in at the material uh, and hits the material itself it will not get reflected or uh, it will not all of it get reflected some of the light will just bounce off of a different unevenescent ridges between the, ref the roughness itself in the material and then gets diffused and reflected so you'll get in the reflection you, you'll get some of the color uh, that is uh, f from the diffuse color itself because it will, it will just bounce here between itself and then these are some tips you can use when setting your reflectance of course so that's for this time next time we'll talk about the other options in the scattering panel so see you next time.